they are going to deploy soldiers, you know, copying uh, the example of South Africa, which I think uh, deployment of soldiers in the manner that South Africa did might not be the, 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 the ideal situation with our, I mean, in our own situation. A lockdown is the best way to go because you make sure that there is no new infections coming in. That's the way China managed to, 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 to put down the pandemic in their own country. And that is the only way that Zimbabweans should do. I am not sure why they are delaying to do that. Deployment of soldiers in this case does not mean that they must come with their guns, with their vehicles, with whatever you. They must come to help. Remember, the sick people need to be cleaned. Yes, the people during lockdown, they need some kind of control. We can deploy police officers in different parts of Zimbabwe, 20 in Rua, 20 in Mapuku, 20 in Highfields, like that, just mo moving around with their cars, making sure that people stay at their homes. Is there no danger of looting? Yeah, but that, that's why we have got the police force. The police uh, is enough to look for that. They must create as much awareness as possible. Secondly, they must provide some kind of support to the people. Because people will end up looting, yes, because they don't have the food. They don't have it. They don't have the, the water. They don't have uh, uh, medical equipment. In the case of someone falling sick, what do they do? People don't even know. So people need assurance along those lines that, okay, don't worry. We are going to do this. We are going to do that. The government is providing you with this. this at this point, uh, you know, these people, the, the, those people, the disaster management people who will include soldiers, who include uh, political leaders, they will be moving around with provisions, supplying provisions to people so that there is no one who will starve. Because, you know, people can starve in their homes. They have been selling tomatoes, selling whatever to survive. They don't even know what they're going to eat tomorrow. So who is going to assist them? That's, that situation will then push them to go and loot. Okay, if looting happens, what will happen to the people who are arrested? That, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's another very serious issue because uh, the only best place to take these people is to take them to prisons. And those prisons, suppose amongst them, there are people who are infected. They will take the disease to, the, to, 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 to prisons. I'm told uh, yesterday a Chinese national who was arrested was taken to Krubi Maximum Prison and he is showing signs of coronavirus. Look at that. We are already polluting prisons. And that is another big disaster. So we must avoid that. We must avoid the looting. The only way to avoid the looting is by assuring them and also providing them something little just to take them until the 21 days. We don't need a curfew. I'm, 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 I'm telling you this, that uh, in the country where I am, it's just one word. Educating people. People are educated. Here where I am, there is no lockdown, but people themselves preferred to put themselves in lockdown. It's a question of educating people. Educate the people. Right now, the government is just mum. They are quiet about it. What are councils doing? They must send information to councils. Councillors must move around and educate people. This is the time and say, look, if this is done, being done for one, two, three, four. People will understand. There is no need for a curfew. Not needed. In, in fact, people should be told alternative things to do. They should be working in their gardens at home, within their yards, and isolated like that. If they are educated, people will do it. This, if the moment we approach it in the in a war way, in a way by which we are like forcing them, then they will resist. People will resist because they are not educated. They are not made aware of why they should be staying in homes the pandemic is going to be serious. And if we are not careful, we will be wiped out in Zimbabwe because uh, there is no preparedness. Okay, then let's look at the issue of burials. Does Zimbabwe have enough crematoriums to bury these people properly? Let's say someone, people start dying of coronavirus in large numbers. 
are the facilities there to we deal with that? We don't have the, the necessary facilities, even handling facilities. People will end up handling their dead relatives with bare hands. We don't have those kind of uh, facilities where we can cremate uh, our, our bodies and, and, and bury them. The handling part is, is, is a disaster again. We, we are not prepared. Zimbabwe is not prepared for that. So it's, okay, it's, so it's something we, very difficult. Will that be the role of the army? Those, yes. If this situation arises, like in Italy, the army was now handling yes. bodies. That, that's, why, that's why I say that uh, the army, the, the, the army personnel, they are state employees, and this is a disaster. They are very much suitable to come and handle this. I hope in their training, they were trained to do disaster management. If they did not train them, then, then what did they train them? They should have trained them to do disaster management. And now the, this is a disaster, just like flooding, just like earthquake. And so the army, the police, and I, I have even included political leaders. They should come forward and also be involved in managing this situation. They must be distributed equally throughout the, all the, uh, the, the, the whole country so that you know, they can be able to handle this and assist. This is very, very important. Okay, so are we going to see mass graves? Yes, that is, that is the, 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 the way that uh, in the case of Zimbabwe, we are going to see them being buried in mass graves and without coffins, without anything, because there is no other option that will be done. Suppose a situation like that of Italy happens in Zimbabwe, which I can foresee, it can even be worse than that in Italy. Because right now, there are you know, epicenters that are developing in different parts of Zimbabwe right now, as we speak, in Mbare, in, in Highfield, in Glen Nora, in, in Zivarasekwa, in Blawayo, in Gweru. I'm, I'm hearing of a lot of these you know, outbreaks that are just happening. And in, it's in a matter of maybe one week's time, we, we are likely to, to hear of a, a serious disaster coming. Right, very, very serious situation developing in Zimbabwe. And I think what we need to do is to keep track of this situation yes. on a daily basis. And also even the medical, the medical practitioners, they need to be quarantined. They, need, they don't need to stay with everyone else. They need to be isolated also. Okay, Mr. Albert Matapo, thank you very much for joining us today. And I'll bring you back again as soon as possible. Is there anything else you want to say before we close? Um, I, I, I just want to say that the people of Zimbabwe should stay at home. The best way is to isolate yourself, is to quarantine yourself, stay at home, and be encouraged to do some kind of work, cleaning your homes, making your gardens. You know, give yourself something to do at home rather than you forcing yourself to be traveling all over the country because you are then increasing the chances of spreading this disease. I love you, Zimbabweans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Albert Matapo, and we'll see you again very soon. Thank you.